These are topsy-turvy days for tech companies seeking investment. The pandemic saw valuations peak and then fall. Venture capital was flowing and then it tightened up. Fortunately, there are early stage investors right here in Ottawa who are looking to fill that void. Who are these angel investors and what impact are they having on Ottawa? Our guest has that answer in this episode of Techopia Live. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Michael Kern from the Ottawa Ottawa Business Journal. Welcome to Techopia Live. This is a regular podcast from OBJ that features executives from next generation technology companies and talks about some of the established tech companies, all with a goal of keeping you and the tech sector informed and connected. Just a few days ago, I attended an April event for Tech Tuesday. And this particular Tech Tuesday uh, featured the 2024 Bootstrap Award recipients. By the way, if you want to check out the recipients, go to obj.ca, and we have uh, a list of them. In the prelude to that event, uh, Ottawa's uh, Nick Quain shared a few thoughts on the local investment climate. And without being negative, he acknowledged that Ottawa doesn't always attract the same investment as cities such as Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. And for that reason, bootstrapping and early stage investing is more critical in Ottawa to early stage tech entrepreneurs. In this episode, we get an update on angel investing in the national capital region. Much of that investment activity happens through a group called the Capital Angel Network, a group, by the way, that's existed for 15 years. Here's a little video on Capital Angel Network to get us started. The Capital Angel Network is a community of angel investors that works together to identify and coach entrepreneurs in raising capital. We invest over $5 million every year into startup companies. We help a lot of founders get started and grow. And we are passionate about helping founders and we're a warm and welcoming group. As angel investor, we are kind of different from those institutional investors or just, uh, you know, people buying stocks on the market. It's all about people. It's a really inclusive environment that is inviting people to come in and contribute to the future of this community. There's so many areas that you could invest in with impact and purpose, but with profit. And you're helping to grow these companies to become large, successful, profitable companies. What a great way to set up today's interview. Without further ado, please welcome the Executive Director of the Capital Angel Network. Here is Suzanne Grant. Hey, Suzanne. Uh, hi, Michael. Thank you so much for inviting me back. Yeah, great video, by the way. Uh, and you, you've got some other videos if if someone wants to consume a little bit of that, uh, that content. But it really did uh, explain things well, Suzanne. I think you, you're not a first time, uh, you, you're not making your first appearance here on Techopia Live. In fact, you've been on a few times. I think one of the goals we want to get into, Suzanne, is to review uh, some of the 2023 activity. And Maybe I'll just observe, uh, Suzanne, that from a from a venture capital perspective, which is not the topic you're addressing here, but the venture capital market seems to have really tightened up, and that's especially here uh, in Ottawa. So we wanted to uh, bring you on and uh, talk a little bit about the angel investing climate over uh, the last uh, several months. Tell us a little bit about 2023, Suzanne. A uh, really great point. You know, the angel community does not operate in a silo when it comes to VC. So I'd say over the last three years, you could say every six months, we've seen a shift in what the investment market looks like. And it is no different for Capital Angel Network. So in the last year, it looked very different. In some ways, it was it was kind of scary. It was a hard year for founders to be raising for the first time. It was a hard year for founders to be going for follow on. So the way the angel community reacted to that in Ottawa was really stepped up and doubled down to support the portfolio companies. So that not only took money, but focus, as you know, with angel investing, 
Um, you know, the angels can become part of your team as mentors and advisors, etc. So there's lots of rolling up the sleeves. All in all, that meant, um, you know, some bigger investments happening, but at different stages. So we had more follow on investments in this past year. And then we also unfortunately had maybe a smaller number of first time investments. So from the outside looking in for a founder looking for first time investment, it became really exceptionally competitive. Uh, so it's changed. Okay. And that's, there's so much to unpack there. Thank you for sharing that, by the way. So uh, really, I, I think you could say the Capital Angel Network and its members really stepped up, particularly yeah. when it comes to portfolio companies uh, through follow-ons. If you were to look back over the past few years, Suzanne, in mm -hmm. terms of the amount of money being invested, what would you say to that? So it was the start of the remarkable change, 2021. We all know about 2021. We know what happened there. It was a big, everybody was home. Investments really went up. Evaluations went up. So uh, that was sort of the start of the change. So if we look back over the past three years, Capital Angel Network has actually doubled our annual averages of investment compared to the three years before. So um, that growth has probably come because our um, membership is becoming maybe a little bit more sophisticated, more diverse. We have more family offices engaged and um, yeah, we're just, we're growing in the right direction across Ontario. Our group is really revered as one of the top angel groups. And I'd say nationally as well. Um, we've had some, we've been in some top five lists in the past couple of years as well. Very, very good. And as I as I mentioned, Nick Queen made that comment. I know you were at the Tech Tuesday event as well. That you know this early stage investing, especially in a city like Ottawa, is so so critical. Um, I wanted to ask a little bit about who. I'm always curious, and I'm sure everyone's curious about who your investors are. We saw some of them uh, probably in that video and that. But who who are the members of Can? Uh, uh, you know, what is their kind of composition? For example, you just said more family offices and what are they looking uh, to do? Uh, it's a really great question. Um, you know, the, the span of an angel investor, lifetime of an angel investor can be different for, for different people. Some people might say, here's a percentage of my portfolio that I want to deploy into high risk, high return investments, and it might take them five years to deploy. So they might come in and out of groups that might wait for the returns to come, to come back. So every six months, we, we do see um, an, an evolution almost um, to the investment climate and to the people that we attract. So currently, Capital Angel Network um, includes a couple of family offices, local family offices, as well as uh, we have membership from Mars IAF, uh, who's headquartered out of Toronto, and Orange Capital to fund. Uh, so you get a real depth of experience in that network base. And, and that's the whole secret sauce from the investor side of joining an um, angel group is that you, you bring all of your insights and you get to share them. And then all the people at the table can share their specific expertise when it comes to investment decisions. It's um, really unique thrilling environment, actually. One thing I want to say is that we are known, we do get feedback from founders. Uh, our last meeting, we had a founder um, come all the way from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia uh, for our investment meeting. And her comment was like, hey, Suzanne, you told me this was a really nice group. Like you meant it. These people are really nice. I've been to a lot of angel groups, I'm not putting down any other angel groups. I'm just saying we have some special Special Ottawa flavor here. Yeah, it's 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 kind of the tone we we try to strike in yeah. in in Ottawa. Uh, listen, I also wanted to ask you a little bit. Maybe advocacy isn't quite the right right word, but I think both you and I would agree that um, there's been a general movement um, focus in Ottawa on getting more female investors and female led uh, startups and and entrepreneurs. Um, tell us about what Can is doing in that regards, Susan, Suzanne. Uh, well, that was the thing that attracted me to Capital Angel Network. That's why I'm here. So that under underestimated people or folks that don't have existing networks can get access to early stage investment. Um, it's really part of our DNA. 
Uh, but there are some specific things that we do. For example, uh, we just did, I think it was our sixth year, International Women's Month uh, Angel Investor Breakfast. And uh, we're seeing a growing trend. We're leading that trend in Canada, in fact, to have more decision makers around investment tables. So when we look at uh, leadership of women, investment tables or capitalization tables are a great place for them to have impact. The more diverse your decision conversations are, the more depth they have, the more insightful insight they have. And so what maybe in the past um, wouldn't be considered now has a different lens. So we're up to now 35% of our angel, our, of our members include a woman. And um, if we look back at the days of like Jennifer Francis, when she joined Capital Angel Network, she was woman number two, and now we have 35%. And how does that translate over the past three years? 45% of our first time investment have gone into women co-founded or founded companies. We see, we know women are tremendous entrepreneurs and leaders. In the past, access to capital was really a barrier. The barrier is not gone, but we're moving the bar here. That is such a neat point on, on two regards. I really take your point on diversity of opinions, diversity within the startup companies. Uh, great point on that. And also, you know, I just wonder, thanks to programs, the activity of of, uh, of Can and also uh, SheBoot, whether, you know, this kind of focus on a more diverse, uh, gender equitable uh, technology sector can become a, a competitive advantage for Ottawa over time. I think that access to deals that maybe other people haven't taken a close look at is always an opportunity. Um, during during the pandemic, I was on a lot of clubhouse conversations and I, I met um, a really fine investor from Silicon Valley, SoCal was the name of her group. And um, they only invested in women founded companies and she within the first three years of founding her fund, um, had three, three unicorns and all women. So, I mean, there, and, and, you know, different perspectives, different ways of, of tackling uh, business models. It's creativity is the name of the game in um, entrepreneurship. So Good we want to mix it up. Right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, we're going to put our uh, conversation on pause here just for a second, Suzanne, to uh, recognize the sponsor of this episode. Here is Pearlie Robertson, Hill and McDougall. Tech companies move at the speed of light and they need a law firm that moves just as fast. Pearlie Robertson, Hill and McDougall solves tech companies' most challenging legal matters. As Ottawa's largest independent full service law firm, Curly Robertson, Hill & McDougall has provided specialized legal services for over half a century. Curly Robertson, Hill & McDougall advises tech companies in all legal matters important to fast-moving companies. That includes financing strategies, venture capital raises, private placements, public offerings, M&A, IP, shareholder agreements, stock options, and more. To learn more about Pearlie Robertson, Hill & McDougall, please visit perlaw.ca. All right, and we're back talking to Suzanne Grant, the Executive Director of Capital Angel Network. In this back half of the podcast, uh, Suzanne, I want to talk about some of the events uh, that are happening in 2024 uh, with CAN. Uh, maybe we'll just start with your regular events and then talk about your big fall event. How does CAN come together on a regular basis? Nine months of the year, we have what's called a member investment meeting. And usually that's in person. So a couple of months, it's, it's digital. And uh, we gather with our members and three selected uh, startups who will present for funding. And whenever we can, on the front end of that, we'll pull in what we call a lightning round. So we'll do two minute pitches to folks that are in our pipeline or maybe are got a little bit stuck in selection. We want them to have an, a second look. Uh, so we'll do that in this coming month in April. We're um, hosted by Carleton University 
and we'll have the opportunity to see some of their startups. And in October, we'll be doing it with uh, University of Ottawa. And otherwise, uh, you know, we meet at TCC Canada, who partner with us to support entrepreneurs in the region. So cool. And um, a big event that everyone should be uh, circling uh, this date on their calendar is your Mash Up event. Tell us about uh, that event if people haven't attended already. Uh, so Mash Up really is about let's just get together as people. You know, uh, Victoria on the earlier video said it's all about people. It really is. Uh, when you're doing selection, you look at a profile and it, you can tell sort of maybe who's got potential. But when you actually meet people, it's a real it's a different story. So at Mashup, it's uh, an informal way that um, all the champions of the ecosystem can rub shoulders a little bit. But it's mainly designed for the entrepreneurs as well as um, the investors to get to know each other informally, it includes a pitch competition. We usually get the clean tech community together, supported by Invest Ottawa. And one of the beautiful things about sitting in the seat of Capital Angel Network is we really don't see ourselves competing with anybody. We're collaborators. And in the sense of uh, mashup, everybody's there. So you just can't miss it. Last year we had 250 people. Uh, it was a great time. This year we've moved it to September because, as yes. you know, we have a national, um, a national, the NACO summit, the national NACO summit is happening for the next three years in May in Ottawa. Great opportunity for us. That is attracting international investors. We've got folks coming from Silicon Valley, venture capitalists, angels. We've got um, folks coming from Europe. And there's lots of space for, for local folks here to participate. So they're looking to attract entrepreneurs. There's space for entrepreneurs as well as investors. You don't need to be part of my investment, our investment group. You, If you're a VC, you're in the community. It's really for everybody. You know, the way that we move Canada forward on that innovation um, potential is we need more investment, right? So uh, government partners in the city from Toronto, municipally, I mean, everybody needs to understand what's happening here. And our great investment into intellectual property and research and development goes nowhere without investment. And if you don't get that first investment from Angel, you know, there's no pipeline for VC. So we all need to work together. It will be some fun. It'll be lots of thinking. And there's lots of opportunities for people to engage in roundtables and be part of the conversation as well, not just listen. It's it's uh, it's it's an exciting uh, time for and to, to welcome NACO, uh, the National uh, Association Capital Organization, Angel Capital Organization to Ottawa, because I think one of the uh, one of the pr issues that we're trying to address here in Ottawa, Suzanne, as you've mentioned, is getting more attention on uh, the local startup scene and the established uh, entrepreneurs and that. So having uh, this NACO summit uh, in Ottawa in May uh, at the National Arts Centre will be really cool. Uh, listen, uh, listen, Suzanne, we're going to wrap up here in a second. But before we do that, it's time for our Building a Better Working World segment brought to you by EY. Uh, so for me and at, and at CAN, it's really about pulling people together, sharing experiences, being open to vision, and, and that supportive, collaborative community with really targeted goals of, of going after big things. That sounds like a better working world to me. <laughs> so Suzanne, listen, we've run out of time, but I want to thank you again for your role and the Capital Angel Network, what you're doing. As you uh, emphasized off the top, it's been a difficult uh, few years for uh, companies looking for investment, but certainly can is uh, pulling its weight uh, and more in making sure some of these uh, important ventures get the funding they need. So thank you for that. Um, I just want to also thank you for the support from Ottawa Business Journal to run uh, the found Ottawa Founder Series. We thought it was so important that the community had a look at the vision, the talents, the 
the caliber of the, the founders and their teams and what is happening right here in our city. So we really appreciate the opportunity to showcase that. Yeah, uh, and thank you again for mentioning that. Uh, those articles, by the way, can be found on obj.ca. And if you look for Suzanne's name, you'll uh, you'll find them there. So, And maybe we'll post them in the show notes. So, Suzanne, thanks again for joining us today. We really appreciate your time and good luck in 2024 and beyond uh, to you and your Capital Angel Network uh, members. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for everything you do. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, thanks again to Suzanne for doing that. Before we wrap up, let's take a look at some of the other companies that are our Techopia champions. Techopia is brought to you by many great sponsors, such as EY, building a better working world. Number Crunch, offering virtual CFO services for SaaS companies. Pearlie Robertson, Hill & McDougall, a leader in business and technology sector law. TD Bank, specialized programs for technology companies, the University of Ottawa Faculty of Engineering, creating the next generation of technical talent. Techopia is not only a podcast, we post new articles daily at obj.ca slash techopia. And if you're on YouTube, please subscribe and click the bell icon. A fascinating conversation with Suzanne to hear more about the angel investing uh, experience uh, in Ottawa. Uh, by the way, you can check out their website. So if you, you're you're from a founder that wants to get some funding, please uh, look them up online. I want to thank you for watching or listening. We hope Techopia is keeping you connected and informed. Let's keep building Ottawa's technology utopia. That is Techopia. Bye-bye.